Okay, so we want to move on to the rate um, at which the rotational coordinate changes. So in the same way that velocity is the rate um, at which the, the position changes, remember velocity is delta x, delta t. So it's the rate at which your position changes. Well, we also want to look at the rotational um, velocity. And this rotational velocity, rotational velocity, is the rate at which delta theta changes. So delta theta divided by delta time. And it's given by this, omega theta. Okay? Omega theta. Okay. So... It's, a, it's an angular, it's a kind of an angular velocity, where we call it the rotational velocity, okay? And what we'll see in chapter 12 is that actually this, dub, this omega theta is a component of something called the rotational velocity vector, omega. Just as vx is a component of v, your velocity, and vy is a component, uh, omega theta is a component of rotational velocity vector omega. Okay. Now the remember that the speed that speed is the magnitude of velocity. So rotational speed is also the magnitude of the rotational velocity, and it's given by this simply the the magnitude or the absolute value of your of your omega. Okay. Um, also want to introduce something called the period. The period is the time that it takes an object in circular motion to complete one revolution. So if an object is going around in circles, um, a period is the time it takes to complete one single revolution. Okay, so now let's, um, let's look at a nice little example here. Say now... Um, we have a puck completing three revolutions in the negative theta direction in delta t equals two seconds. Your change in time is two seconds. What is the average rotational velocity? Okay. What is the rotational velocity? Well, it's given by this, delta theta over delta time, delta t, and what is this? Remember, how do you calculate your, uh, your delta theta, your, the change in your rotational coordinate? Well, your rotational coordinate changes by three revolutions, but in order to convert this into your rotational coordinate, you need to multiply the amount of revolution by 2 pi. Okay, so there are three revolutions. We multiply it by 2 pi, and because it's going in the negative direction, we multiply by, by the negative there. So delta theta is minus 6 pi, divide by the 2 seconds, and we get this. The rotational velocity is minus 9.4, and this is called inverse second. That's called the inverse second. All right? And then the period, remember the period is the time it takes to complete one revolution. So we take the total time right, for these three revolutions, and we divide by the three revolutions, and we get the time it takes to complete one revolution is 0.67 seconds. Okay? Now, I'll just finish off with this. Um, what is the relationship between an object's speed and its rotational velocity? So... What do we mean by this? Let's just come back to this diagram over here. Remember that the rotational velocity is, a, is an angular velocity. It's equal to this rotational coordinate, the, the delta rotational coordinate divided by time. Okay? But the speed is the magnitude of this, of this velocity. And remember the velocity is always um, tangent to the curve. Now, look at, look at these two... Look at this puck and look at that puck. Okay? Both of these pucks have exactly the same delta theta. 
the same change in rotational coordinate. <coughs> okay? Um, and so, this means that their rotational velocities, if you divide by, they move through, this one moves through there at this, the, over the same time period that that one moves from there to there. So, um, their rotational velocities are identical, but the velocities, the, the speeds, the magnitudes of these speeds are different. Even though the rotational velocities are the same for both of these pucks, can you see that the speed of this guy is larger than the speed of this guy? And why is that? Well, it is because it has to go through a longer path, a longer distance over the same time period. So for this puck to go through the same angle as this puck, it has to traverse a longer path. So this V2 is going to be larger than V1. Okay. Similarly, if you look at this um, rotating disc, um, each of these points, each of these points, okay, are going at the same rotational velocity. Okay, it's a similar idea to this. Each of these points has the same rotational velocity, but as you can see, the further you move away from the center, the larger the speed is, the larger the velocity is. Okay, so um, if you move to this ring over here, you can see all of these velocities will be the same in magnitude, the same magnitude, obviously different directions. If you move to this second ring, can you see that the, the velocities are larger, the magnitudes, the speeds are larger. And that is exactly the same reason as this. Okay. So each point on a disk has a different velocity, but all have the same rotational velocity because all complete a revolution at the same time interval. Okay, does that make sense, guys? So it says that the, we have an ad the advantage of using rotational velocity um, to describe rotational motion is, is because... All of these guys have different speeds, right? But they all have the same rotational velocity. That's an important concept.